Hey folks, Dale Davidson, uh, the VA guy. Hey, thank you for uh, tuning in today. We are talking, it's a little bit complicated today. We're talking about mental disorders, but not PTSD. We're going to be doing a PTSD video here real soon. Mental disorders and PTSD are separate, okay? They have different qualifications, different issues involved. Anyway, Today we're talking about mental disorders, okay? So the disability compensation rules, or again, compensation, discussed in earlier videos in my uh, series, we talked about three different things that you've got to do, okay? So there are many unique issues that arise in pursuing comp claims for mental disorders. And again, the issues that are relevant for PTSD are unique so we're going to be covering those in a later video. So if you are a veteran seeking service connection for a mental disorder, not PTSD, you usually must have to have the following to be awarded, okay? You got to have a diagnosis or chronic symptoms of a current disability, current mental disability. You got to have evidence of a service incurrence or aggravation of the disease, okay? You've got to have competent medical evidence. We, that's where we talk about nexus, a connection between your injury and your service or your mental disability, okay? So as with many other disabilities, there are five ways to service connect your mental disorder. So mental disorder can be first evidence while you were in service. So that's direct service connection. For instance, I had a client who was over in the uh, DMZ and was uh, basically discharged under a mental disability order or evaluation. And so that is direct service connection, okay? So second way, the mental disorder could have pre-existed service, but was aggravated by your service. Your mental disorder could have been approximately caused by some kind of service-connected physical condition, you know, something like that. Uh, depression, anxiety, something like that. Certain mental disorders can be service-connected on a presumptive basis, but usually if they're only if they're evidence within one year after service or manifest in a former prisoner of war. <clears throat> I've yet to see any kind of mental disability that's manifest uh, within one year of service, and uh, I've not met any uh, former prisoner of war. So, and finally, if you are injured by the VA medical care, and the medical disorder resulted from the injury, uh, you've got a service connected there. <clears throat> That's more like a, kind of like a medical malpractice claim. So disability claims for mental disorders present a whole host of unique challenges that we're going to be exploring here. So one of the biggest challenges to a mental disorder case is deciding the type of mental disorder for which service connection is going to be requested okay so if you seek benefits compensation for a type of mental disorder let's just for instance say it's anxiety okay and it turns out during the processing of your claim that you really suffer from a different mental disorder schizophrenia so to speak it'd be devastating to you if the VA said <laughs> You claimed anxiety. We uh, diagnosed you with schizophrenia, therefore claim denied. That's not how it happens, okay? Fortunately, if you have a mental disorder, and because I'm not competent, neither are you to diagnose your mental disorder, if you claim one type of diagnosis, for instance, my example, anxiety, and then it turns out it's schizophrenia, then you're not just limited to the anxiety because the VA is going to look at all of the theories and all the claims that you have submitted and they're going to look at all the medical evidence and say, okay, now you claimed anxiety. 
you really have schizophrenia, therefore we're going to rate you for schizophrenia. I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist, and so I'm not qualified to diagnose you or your mental disorder. And guess what? Neither are you. Okay? So that's why it's important that we get you in to see a qualified person to diagnose your mental disorder. In fact, get you into somebody that will give you a complete diagnostic uh, workup for uh, whatever mental disorder or mental condition that you've got. Because we need to be as complete as possible and thorough as possible so that uh, your claim is not delayed. So if you had a mental disorder claim and you were denied, uh, way back when you were denied because they said, well, you know, we've got, you were ADHD and <clears throat> so therefore you claimed ADHD, but it's not really ADHD, it's something else. And they said, well, we're not going to, you know, we're going to deny your claim. Okay. So you could submit new and material evidence to reopen the case. And you can say, well, guess what, VA? The definition for ADHD uh, was updated under the DSM-5. I said I had ADHD back then, but I do now. So, you know, I, I had some kind of mental disorder. So you can actually reopen your, get your case reopened from that standpoint. They've got to reopen your case even if your condition was not previously given a diagnosis, okay? So what happens if you've got multiple diagnoses, multiple psychiatric disabilities? In the past, all of that's been kind of separately denied by the VA, but you can file a request to reopen your claim of service connection for one specific psychiatric disability, but just because you ask to open it for one specific disability doesn't mean they're going to open it up for everything. So you've got to be careful when you are filing to reopen your disability claim for mental disorders that you cover all of them. That's why it's important to have your psychiatric evaluation, full, full blown makeup of all the different tests that they've got out there now. So realize <clears throat> that all the VA, the VA says that they're the kinder and gentler VA that and they say, well, we're obligated to liberally construe and we're going to be sympathetic to your claim to reopen. But whether the encompassed claim or whether your uh, request to reopen depends upon your intent. So don't rely on the VA to follow their liberally construe and sympathetic sympathetic nature okay they're they're just, just just don't okay the intent rule okay the safest course of action is to state that your claim is being filed for service connection for any and all mental disorders you suffer from including but not limited to and then you fill in the blanks but say you're I'm not looking for just anxiety but any in all mental disorders that I suffer from, including but not limited to. Those are the buzzwords. So again, we'll work with your psychologist, psychiatrist, whoever your mental health professional is to make sure that those buzzwords are in the report. So <clears throat> another complicating factor in a mental disorder case is that you may suffer from more than one mental disorder. You can receive service connection for more than one psychiatric disorder but each disorder is is given a separate rating okay but if this diagnosis kind of overlaps with this diagnosis you're not going to get two separate ratings you're going to get the higher of the two let's just take a, an example let's say that you suffer from major depressive disorder and PTSD each of these disorders resulted from your military service and the two disorders produce a similar set of symptoms the VA will service connect both disorders and will assign one overall disability rating so you get one rating for two disabilities the major depressive disorder and then the PTSD so let's change that example up a, a little bit 
assume that your major depressive disorder is not is not related to your military service but the PTSD is service connected now if your doctor who is evaluating you cannot separate the symptoms produced by your major depressive disorder from symptoms produced by your PTSD then the VA considers all of the symptoms to be due to PTSD in setting your rating okay so they look at just the PTSD as being service connected and they're basically ignoring the major depressive disorder if however your doctor can isolate the symptoms produced by PTSD from the major depressive disorder then the PTSD rating will be based only on the symptoms produced by the PTSD. <clears throat> so look, folks, <laughs> this mental disability stuff is rocket science. And so be careful in claiming a secondary disorder as it can come back to bite you, okay? The VA attaches special meaning to words such as compensation and your physician attaches different words for whatever they use. They call them terms of art, okay? To understand and argue a mental disorder claim, you know, you should know these special terms. If you don't know these special terms, then don't argue the claim. For instance, you say, well, I Googled my symptoms and I have an anxiety disorder, or I have trauma and stressor related disorders, I have a PTSD, whatever it is, if you don't know those terms and the medical meaning of those terms, don't put them in your claim, okay? You're better off getting a licensed clinical psychologist, psychiatrist, somebody to give you a full-blown examination to put those words, put the, the medical terminology that the VA is looking for. Biggest advice I can give you in seeking comp for a mental disorder, get a full-blown evaluation from a medical professional. Tell them what you want. Tell that medical professional, hey, I'm looking for compensation. I have this mental, I think I have got this mental disorder, and this is what I need it to say. Can you give me this evaluation? And then, uh, again, uh, that evaluation will produce benefits for you and will make that claim a whole lot easier. This mental disability uh, claim process is, is really unique and really complicated, but I hope you learned something. I hope I've got, got you thinking. As far as everything is, goes, if you don't take anything away from it, take this away, get an evaluation. Get an evaluation, all right? So hey, I've got this video here, three things Okay, you need to file your VA claim. So go to that video and it will explain the different processes and things like that. But again, uh, the three things that you need to file your VA claim in order for you to be successful.